All right, we are back. It's no apologies on Beck, and um, it was it was a hard decision whether we should just keep plowing Wait, through, with through Jared with Jared the whole yeah. night. Um, got a lot of information there. Yeah, I know a lot of. It, I'm just. I'm blown away. It is. The Republican it's, Party is screwing up so bad. They just, it's like, it's like they read a book on what not to do. It's undercover of darkness unless people hear about it, I guess, and that's the, that's a troubling thing to me. Yeah. So. All right. So we are going to cover a, another proclamation. Another proclamation. Joseph Robinette Biden Jr. Yes. Who apparently has taken some very interesting showers in the past. I really we don't want to hear any more about that. No, too much information. Too much. Well, we're going to talk about it someday. Yeah, it's that, coming is, out. that is all true. Some it weird is. diary stuff there. I saw that. I know. All right. But this proclamation has nothing to do with showers. It's all about second chances. And uh, it's a proclamation on second chance month. The month in which you get a second chance. This is totally classic Biden, is it not? Pandering, pandering, pandering. Yep. So, so um, pull up our first portion of the, uh, of the proclamation quote there. Uh, During Second Chance Month, we lift up all those who, having made mistakes, are committed to rejoining society and making meaningful contributions. Sounds good, right? We lift all of those up. We lift them up in nebulous and vague ways. Yeah, it's it's all it's all vague, and and I want to talk a little bit more because what we're talking, what they're talking about here is criminal justice reform. Right. They're just doing it in a very odd way and a very um, you know like platitudes and Lactose. and all the garbage that the leftists um, speak. Um, the next quote is: My administration is committed to a holistic approach to building safe and healthy communities. This includes preventing crime and providing opportunities for all Americans. It also requires rethinking the existing criminal justice system, whom we send to prison and for how long, how people are treated while incarcerated, how prepared they are to reenter society once they have served their time, and the racial inequities. There it is. Didn't take very long, did it? <laughs> that lead to the disproportionate number of incarcerated black and brown capitalized people. Yes. I wonder if tan Almost. can also be capitalized. <laughs> like ecru or something, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> ecru. So here's the thing. Now, I'm going to, I agree with a portion of this, right? So um, the thing is that we, we need to be careful on who we're incarcerating. Right. Incarceration is, is very costly, and it's, it obviously takes away people's liberties. People There's nothing should... wrong with criminal justice reform, is what you're saying. No, as no. a holistic thing, but he, right. where, if you if you if you're able to decide who truly belongs in prison, right, and who does not belong in prison, and who doesn't belong in prison, it, that part of criminal justice we're good with. We need to really uh, instead of instead of throwing the book at everyone, who needs to be removed from society, and if it's just a matter of uh, making people pay or having it be uh, uh, something that that makes them think twice before Higher committing a crime, deterrence, exactly things like that. But if they need to be, if if the rest of society needs to be protected, then put them in prison. Right. You're you're going to shrink the prison population down so much, and all of these people that they want to give second chances to wouldn't need a second chance in that sense because they wouldn't be in prison. Right. It's it's. It's a different but what they always do in every single one of our executive orders that we have gone through or proclamations, they always at about the third or fourth sentence insert race and racial justice mm -hmm. into every single thing. And it's just ad nauseum. It's so tiring. It's exhausting. Well, it is. And, and we know, boy, we could go on a, a, a full couple segments on why incarceration rates are higher for blacks and browns and tans. Um, and, and, and it has a lot to do with leftist policies that have been in place for the last it's 60 a lot years. It to do with fatherhood. Well, which has it's everything to do, to do with, with the policies, policies of the leftists exactly. over the last 60 years. Exactly. Uh, all right, next up. We must commit to second chances from the earliest stages of our criminal justice system. And... Um, Meaning... <laughs> What? What does that even mean? The earliest stages, stages of so, our criminal. Again, what we're what we're what we're doing is going to. They, they're talking about second chances. They're they're approaching it incorrectly. They're saying everyone needs a second chance. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing is that we're not worried about second chances. You and I, perhaps, we're worried about the 14th, 15th, and 16th chances Thank from you. these repeat offenders. 100%. Right. If you if you instead of just say, hey, everyone needs more chances, if you first say, we're going to triage the people that need to go to prison versus not, mm -hmm. for instance, uh, drug use. 
personal drug use. Why the hell are they in prison? When they come out, they're just going to use drugs. That doesn't help, right? We, well, they, I, I would counter to you that those people who use drugs may also be uh, selling drugs. That's it. But the personal use, they're not harming anyone if it's personal use. And they shouldn't be in prison because they're consuming taxpayer dollars. And there, there's nothing in prison that's going on that's going to help. And recidivism on drug use after you leave prison is extraordinarily high. Got it. So what, what I'm saying is second chances, sure, when you're looking at, if you want to think second chance, think about, hey, we're going to knock this down from a felony to a misdemeanor. In this particular case, it's your first time. But what I want to get away from, and whether it's drugs or not, but what I want to get away from is this idea that if it's a violent offender. Right. Get them out of society. Who has their fourth or fifth or sixth offense, mm -hmm. they don't need a second chance. They've right. had their second chance Correct. already. And the problem with the approach the Biden administration is taking is that there is no recognition that there's a, there's a, a, a whole array, spectrum, a range. Mm -hmm. range of offenders. Right. Now, my question is, is why are they pander? What is the backstory to pandering to criminals, criminals' families, aspiring criminals? Why is it that they are pandering? Is it they are once again pandering to their base or people they want to be able to vote Democrat again? I mean, yes, yes, it is. And because uh, Biden was uh, partially responsible as a senator for some of the very harsh uh, uh, um, uh, legislation for crimes, specifically drug crimes, that put away blacks like crazy, which is what he was really hit on during Wasn't the campaign. Wasn't Trump really good at uh, Yes, releasing? Trump was fantastic at I that. I thought he was really good at that one area. Right. But anyway, so we have, so what we have in the proclamation is second chance. Again, like almost all of the proclamations, it means very little. It's a lot of rhetoric. Uh, and as I said, it's a lot of platitudes and it doesn't mean much. Um, but, but now you are aware of it. Yay. <laughs> yay, yay.